All right. Today is the, well, it's the 14th, right? Because I see a lot of people wearing pink and red, so it must be the 14th. So we're going to call these uh, age problems. <clears throat> They're word problems. They just happen to involve people's ages and the wording on them can get a little bit complex. So um, as I've done before, I'm going to go find my notepad and copy and paste a problem in. So give me just a quick second here. Okay, they are gone from the notepad. So I'm going to pause the recording. Nice and short, right? Took about a minute. So let's say you didn't know how old I was, which some of you know, some of you don't, but most of you don't care. So let's say that you didn't know my age, you would say that I am X years old, right? That's what we do in algebra. If we don't know something, we just call it X. Um, how old will I be in two years? Okay, you're not supposed to know I'm 50. So let's go back to the part where you didn't know that I was 50 because like I've never told you. So if I am X years old, you don't know, pretend. How old am I in two years? I am exactly X plus two. How old will I be in 10 years? X plus 10. Again, that's an algebraic thing. It's like if I don't know what something is, I call it X and I can modify that X. Like in the word problems, when you don't know something and you put X and it says like twice that, twice the smaller number, you just go, oh, you mean two X. Like that's what we've been practicing, right? How old was I five years ago? x minus five so right as we move forward in time we add years and as we move backwards in time we subtract years i don't think for a second that you don't understand that like i'm not trying to insult your intelligence it's just that's so that's going to be kind of the key ingredient here is these age problems the ages are going to change so in, very rarely in these problems are we going to keep referring to people in their current ages. Like you'll notice in this problem, we have one point of reference for Sally and Hank, right? And it's in the, it, the first sentence is stated in the current time. So right now, Sally is nine years older than Hank. That's great. But then the problem shifts to the future and it says in 12 years. So as we, we're going to define our variables just like we normally do. But then we're going to talk about as we move into the future, we're going to change what their ages are. So who do you want? Do you want to use S and H or do you want to use X and Y? Me, no care. S and H it is. I decided I would do the first one I heard. So we're going to go with the contextually specific variables. So we are going to define S as Sally's, sorry about that, age now. And it's important that you include the word now because as we shift to the future and in some problems to the past, it's that point of reference as saying, okay, Sally is S years old. 12 years from now, she's going to be S years old, right? She's going to be something else. So, and then of course we have to define Hank. So we're going to let H equal Hank's age again now. I've tried this lesson as you know, by this point in my life, I can say like dozens of times and I go back and forth, you know, every year, some, some lessons I've figured out, like I'm good. I, I know exactly what to say. This one, I kind of go back and forth each year. I'm going to try this year, <clears throat> not defining any more variables. What I've tried in the past. And if this fails, by the way, if you feel after this, like, wow, that was wicked, nasty, then maybe I'll try um, in the next problem, defining multiple sets of variables. 
So I know you don't like this step defining variables. So this is kind of good because you have less to do. But um, what I've done in the past is said, let's also go into the future and define Sally in the future. And I'm just going to kind of see if we can blend that into the process. Right. So like in 12 years, how old is Sally? Yeah, S plus 12. Right. And how old will Hank be in 12 years? H plus 12. Right. I mean, whatever they are now, we're going to add 12. So instead of defining those and actually writing it down, let's just stick with the now. S and H are how old they are right now, and we'll modify them throughout the problem as the context demands that we do, okay? So let's try writing an equation. And this first equation is in the present tense. And so the word is, and just, I mean, you understand the English language, that's referring to right now. So what kind of an equation could I write for Sally and Hank's age relationship right now? I could not have said that any better myself. And I'm only going to say it again because the, my microphone's right here. So uh, that was really well done, Gage. So it says Sally is. Sally is. Like that's what we've been practicing is can I take words and replace them with mathematical symbols? Nine years older, remember, then when we see this word then, we know, oh, tuck it at the back. So we're going to put our plus nine at the back and Hank is right here. So that's just a really basic comparative statement that if you take Hank's age and add nine, poof, you get Sally's age. I'm assuming you're good on that one, right? I don't know if this will be difficult for you guys. Again, all year I've been finding that things that in the past have been hard aren't that hard. And it's just got lucky this year. Maybe I just got a bunch of wizards or something, but we're going to go into the future now. And the key, the reason why we know we're going into the future is because of these three words in 12 years. So we understand English well enough to know that we've traveled ahead in time now 12 years. So what we're going to do is we're going to write an equation that states this. We want to write the purple box, but we have to do it in the context of the future. So what mathematical operation is coming to mind when I say their ages will total 101 plus, mm -hmm. for sure? I mean, we know in that context that when two things total something, it just means they got added together. So the mistake that I would commonly see here, and don't write this down, would be for someone to say, oh, so Sally plus Hank equals 101. The flaw in that logic is that obviously that's not true, because that would be if Sally and Hank's age added to 101 right now, which they don't, right? That's not true right now. It's true in 12 years. So I need to get rid of that garbage equation. What two quantities am I going to add together to make 101? What is Sally's age in 12 years? S plus 12. So there is Sally's age in 12 years. And what am I going to add to that? Hank's age in 12 years. Very good. So these two quantities, and I'm going to write this down for you, just so you understand, this S plus 12 is Sally's future age. Right? So we're, we're going back to that logic of, like, the sum of two numbers is blah, blah, blah. Like, we're just literally writing something plus something equals something like 101 in this case it's just that the some things are in and of themselves little baby math problems and then of course the other one that's being added is h plus 12 and that is hank's future age and you won't write this every time you may not have even written the green and yellow stuff this time i'm putting it up there in case you would be the kind of person to say where did you get that from well i just took future age plus future age and I now know that those future ages, ages when put together equal, and there's our system. So as we go through the four examples today, we're going to talk about future ages mean we add to their current age, and the past ages means that we take away from their current age, obviously. All right, so I'm going to get rid of some stuff uh, to clean up my board a little bit. And now it's time to say step two. Adios, I'm on to the math, which by now should be getting easier for you. Um, the math itself shouldn't be the burden. 
it should feel bless you it should feel like a relief when you get done with step two because now it's just robot stuff so which method are you thinking or maybe what else are you thinking is there something else maybe you'd like to do before we start yeah and there's honestly i mean we can and listen if you're the kind of person if this equation on the bottom where i'm moving my pen if that bothers you i wouldn't have any issues you don't have to do this but like if you if that just feels loose to you it would be okay just for the heck of it if you wanted to put your 12s together i don't know if it's worth it to you but you could like if that if you feel like well there's loose ends there i want to tie those up you could write the bottom equation as s plus h plus 24. but if it's not bothering you then we'll just proceed we good so morgan i like what you said it's time to draw a box and we we by now should be experts at recognizing which is the better of the two methods and as we've seen I feel like 90% of the problems we've done lately, substitution has been the one that's been calling out to us. So Sally's current age is H plus nine. So I can take a box and say, well, that I can replace any time in this problem that I see an S. So I'm going to go to the bottom equation where I see S and I'm going to replace that letter with H plus nine. So far, so good. When I replace Sally's current age, because that's, remember, that's what S is. Without the 12, it's just how old she is now. That's what we want. So if I replace the S with H plus 9, this new bottom equation will say H plus 9 plus 12 plus H plus 12 equals 101. We doing okay? And now it's time just to do the math, the math that we've been trying to practice on and off since, you know, August, and that is just combine like terms, solve the equation. So let's go ahead and uh, two birds, one stone. Let's put our H's together. How many H's do we get if we add those up? For sure. And then I see three numbers that I have to add together. The ones with the yellow arrows with the, that one, that one, and that one are all like terms. What's nine plus 12 plus 12? It is exactly 33. God, it's just a classic two-step equation here. This is just what two-step equations just look and feel like. Step one is get rid of that 33. <clears throat> so I'm going to leave the 2H right where he's at. I'm going to subtract 33 from both sides, which is, it's exactly 68. And then I'm going to divide 68 by 2, and I'm going to get. So what did I just find? Right now, Hank's 34. Yeah, good. And if I know Hank is 34, again, it's substitution. And I've said this 25 times, but here comes number 26. The best part about substitution is on the last step when we, we don't have to go plug 34 back someplace in place of the H. Like we're very specific about this. There is a beautiful, convenient little red box into which I can put my first answer. Those of you guys who stubbornly refuse to draw the box don't understand how nice that is, but it's nice. So if I put my 34 right up in there, what's 34 plus 9? Yeah. So I can now say that Sally must be 43. So it would be easy to panic at this point. If you're the kind of person who likes to check your answers, you might you might say, hold on, that doesn't work. Their ages don't add, add up to 101. But why are those ages not adding up to 101? Because that's not 12 years from now. And if you if you wanted to proof, like, I think it's kind of fun in these to validate. I mean, I use the term fun, but it's it feels good to actually go and say, is this legit? So, like, if I added 12 years to Sally's age, let's go ahead and time 12 years. Time machine. How old will Sally be? She'll be 55 years old. And in the same 12 years, how old will old Hanky be? He'll be 46. And it feels good to kind of look at the situation and go, Ha, huh. hot dog. Look at that. If I add their futures, eight future ages together, that's my 101. So to answer the question in this case, like everything I just wrote in red is completely optional. That's just me kind of getting geeky and going, it's just fun to see that it works. To answer the actual question, I would use my sentences and I would say, um, Sally is 43, comma, and 
pink is 34. It's okay. Some of the questions will say random things, like just for fun, like on a quiz, I might write a question like, how old was Hank nine years ago? Like it's completely out of the blue. But once you know their ages right now, I can't stump you, right? Unless you don't read and then you'd get what you get. But like if I said, how old was Hank nine years ago? I just take H and I subtract nine. I'm like, oh, he's 25. How old will Sally be in 30 years? Oh, 73. Like you can manipulate those answers to suit whatever question someone asks. We good there? All right, let's uh, grab problem number two here. Your next assignment, you'll get it in about 20 minutes or so. Um, it's pretty short. It has only seven problems. It's just one-sided seven problems. That's fine. Did that feel okay, the way we did that last one? Okay. So you guys seem to like the contextually specific appropriate variables. So like rather than use X and Y, because their names aren't like, you know, Xander and Yanni. So uh, let's use F for Flip's age now, and let's use S for Susie's age now. So let's let F equal Flip's age now, and let's let S equal Susie's age now. So we have one sentence that like the last problem is stated in the current, the present tense. So no plus age minus age modification necessary. The first sentence says that Flip is currently 13 years younger than Susie. What's that going to look like as an algebra problem? Let's just start with this. Flip is. F equals. There it is. Flip is. Yes. And again, you're doing a great job of identifying this word. I think I feel like I finally have gotten that point across. The word then tells us to go flipsy do, right? So 13 years younger, the, the human mind wants to put 13 minus. And then you're like, oh, then younger than. So we know to put the minus 13 at the back. That's 13 less than, fewer than, younger than. Like those are all kind of cut from the same cloth. Uh, so Flip is currently 13 years younger than Susie. So there's our present tense relationship equation. And now we morph into the past, right? You can tell from reading it that we're going back in time. And, and how do I know? Well, because I mean, I don't, I mean to talk down to you. You can read nine years ago, uh, we're going backward. So when we now refer to their ages, how old for the next minute or so is Flip going to be? F minus nine. Flip's age now for the rest of this problem, for the, at least for the next minute or so, Flip's age is now F minus nine. And what's Susie's age? S minus nine, because we're going back in time, right? So we're going to write a relationship equation, and I'm going to underline it in purple. And this purple equation is just like what we're used to, but we just, again, have to be cognizant of the fact that we're not writing it with Fs and Ss. We're writing it with their past tense ages, right? 
So how am I going to structure this? Like it says Susie was. Again, if, if it were present tense, I would do, oh, so Susie was. Uh-uh. Because that's present tense. How should I write my, how should I start my equation? So Susie was. And if you were like, where'd the minus nine come from? I'd say, you probably just haven't been listening because we're nine years ago now. <clears throat> so Susie nine years ago wasn't S. She was S minus nine, right? Twice. Here's that word again. <laughs> the word that's been kicking some booty. Twice. What does that mean? Times two, right? So twice as old as Flip was then. What's that going to look like? Two. But it's not this. This would be a really popular mistake. Again, what's the flaw in my logic? Oh, I'm still not, I'm, I'm not, if I write that, I'm talking about the present tense, right? It's twice as old as Flip was then. How old was Flip then? Mm -hmm. So it's two times in parentheses, F minus nine. You're stating that Susie's twice as old as Flip. And their ages are not what they are right now. Their ages are modified by minus nine. Good? Not bad? Good? Yeah. Which makes us go, adios, evil, step two, onto the easy. Should, again, should by now be the easy. Sorry if you don't feel that way, but it should be. So I am, however, going to clean the bottom equation. I'm not going to ask for your input this time. The thing is, when there's parentheses involved, if we start doing substitution when there's already parentheses, it's not that we can't do it. I just don't want to take us down that road. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom equation and we're going to clean a little bit of house on it. So we're going to take the um, distribution on the right. So instead of thinking of it the, like, like it currently is, I'm going to do S minus 9 equals what? 2F. Good. Excellent. And I wouldn't, you know, <clears throat> I do things on the board that you sometimes shouldn't do in your notes. Like I'm going to do this, but I don't think that you should, because I don't know if you're the kind of person that ever looks back at your notes, but if you were to look back at your notes and this was all you saw, there's a pretty good chance that you'd go, I don't know how I got that. So like, I'm just moving it to make it look a little bit more convenient, but you should probably have all three equations still present in the calculus. Maybe cross one of them out a little bit so you can still see it. I don't know. Now it's definitely time again for substitution. Another substitution has just fallen right into our lap. It says F equals box. I'm like, yeah, let's do this. So we're going to box up this. And if you're sitting here going, like, how does he know when to do that? I know because F is already by itself. And remember, substitution, step one, is get a variable by itself. So if it falls into your lap like that, take it, run. Yeah. Where are we going to put that box? In F. So like, we'll draw a little arrow here. It's kind of hard to see, but it, we're going to go right there. <laughs> but it could have left more room, I guess. So the bottom equation is now going to say S <clears throat> minus 9 equals 2 parentheses minus 18. And what's going into those parentheses? Nice. You can see probably how confusing this would have been if we had left the parentheses and then had to put S minus 13 inside another set of parentheses. That's like, ugh. boy, where's it? So just don't mess with it. If you got parentheses, get them out of there before you go mooking around and substitute and stuff. And again, we find ourselves morphing from February 14th back to like September 3rd. Like when, remember when algebra was just this, this was your problem for the day, solve an equation. We got this. So we're going to distribute on the right-hand side. What are we going to get when we distribute that two through that group? Nice. Let's keep going. I see some like terms. I don't want to, you know, if you're even thinking about putting the S's together, you're getting ahead. Don't go. Remember, simplify the left side. Simplify the right side. 
clean as much as you can before you start throwing things across the equal sign. That was something I probably said 138 times at the beginning of the year. Now let's go ahead and move some stuff around. I personally am going to move the single S to the right because I would rather not get negative one S. I prefer to get positive one S. So I'm taking this positive S and I'm going to subtract him over to there. And at the same time, since it's not August and we can do this, I'm also then going to get the 44, the minus 44, and move him to that side. By doing that, I place the S's on one side, the numbers on the other, and I'm good to finish the job. So if I subtract S from the right side, I get, oh, how convenient, just a single S. That's going to save me having to divide. And then when I add a 44 to a negative 9, what do I get? Positive 30. Five. Okay. So what did we just find? Sally's age right now. And the problem again says, I probably, if I had, I don't think I'll rewrite this one for like the later classes, but so again, I want to warn you that the question will not always be how old are they now, right? I could very well, I'm within my rights at this point to say, um, how old will Flip be in 19 years? If that feels random to you, it, it is what it is. Let's first off, let's go find Flip. So again, we have this beautiful, convenient purple box. So we're going to take the number 35 and we're going to put it right there into the box. What is 35 minus 13? 22. So we just figured out that flip is 22. Now, because the problem says what it says, we're welcome now to proceed and write our equation. Just one more time, broken record. Had I asked you some random question? Like, how old was Flip 20 years ago? Two. How old will Sally be in 19 years? Oh, 54. I mean, you can do anything at this point if you possess the, the like, the crux of it. Like, how old are they now? Ask me anything. I got it. All right. So we would just write a simple little sentence and say Flip is 22 and... Sal Susie, I'm sorry, I said Sally, that was from the last problem. And Susie is 35. That's it. So far, so good. All right, almost there. We've got a couple more. The, what's going to change in these next examples, I'm cautioning you, is I'm not the answer to the problem is not going to be an age. It's going to be a number of years required to get a certain age. So you've been warned. So go ahead and get this one. Um, Copy down. Okay. And you'll notice right away, like some fishy is going on. Because you're like, wait a second. You're literally telling me how old they are. Yep. Mark's 26. His dad's 58. Problem's over, right? No. Again, this problem is not about how old are they. It's about how many years will be required to get a certain condition to be met. And if I recall correctly, sitting here looking at this, again, I haven't done these problems in a year. Um, I don't think we're going to get a system of equations on this one. I think this one is just going to be an equation. So no system, no elimination, no substitution. That's kind of nice. You'll see what I mean. There's really only one relationship statement in this problem, and it's not the first sentence, right? The first sentence we need, but the first sentence, I can't get an equation from the fact that Mark's 26 and his dad is 58. I'm going to use those numbers, but like they're not worthy of an equation. There's no algebra there. There's no, it's just nothing. There's no meat on the bone. So um, I'll help you out with this one. It's a little bit weird. We're used to, again, the variables representing like how old someone is. In this case, we're, our, we are going to use X. And 
what changes now is that the variable is a number of years. That's the number of years that are required in order for the second sentence to be true. So obviously right now, if you do any math at all, you can see that Mark's dad is not twice his age, right? What, what would twice Mark's age be right now? Yeah, and his dad's not 52. So like I remember for myself that there was a point in my life as a math teacher when my dad was twice my age. And I, because I'm kind of a nerd, I found that to be like, um, it was kind of cool. If I recall correctly, it was around my 30th birthday. I think when I was 30, my dad was 60. And I thought, you know, I was probably the only person that thought that was neat. But I was like, this is pretty cool, dad. I came up with that on a golf course one day, I think. Hey, dad, you're exactly twice as old. It's cool. And it'll never happen again. It never happens before that. And it'll never happen again after that, because the next year, you know what I mean? Like uh, I'm 31 and he's 61. He's no longer twice my age. So there's this one point in time. And then you could say the same thing for your parents. You guys are all about 15, right? And your parents are probably in their early 40s, just a guess. And so right now you're not half their age, but there will come a time as your age grows and there's there'll come a point where snapshot you go, I'm half your age, mom. And that's I don't know. So that's what this problem is about, is tracking that. You awake over there, homie? All right, let's do this. So what we're trying to do is basically say this. And this is these are a little bit hard until they're not. So <laughs> uh, we want Mark's dad to be twice as old as Mark. So I, you can write this down if you want. We want um, like future dad. To equal twice future mark. <clears throat> you should write that down. I think you should. I've changed my mind. You should write that down. Because that's going to make the equation that we're about to write make sense. So think about that. Like, I want future dad to be two times future mark. How old is future dad? Bless you. <laughs> I agree. How old's dad right now? How old's dad in the future? How old's dad in one year? How old's dad in two years? How old's dad in three years? How old's dad in X years? Now we're cooking with bacon grease. Future dad is exactly this old. And there's our variable coming in and saying, there I am. You don't know who I am, but if you add me to dad's age right now, you will get dad's age in the future, some unknown point in the future. Maybe it's three years from now. Maybe it's five years from now. I don't know. We're going to find out here in a minute. And then I'm going to write equals two times, but instead of future Mark, now that you kind of know the secret, how old is Mark in the future? Yep. I don't know what X is, but if I add X years, that'll be his age in the future, right? So there's future dad is exactly two versions of future Mark. And if we solve this again, like I said, this is not a system, no substitution, no elimination. This is just an equation. Let's solve it. Uh, I would say we have to distribute. Let's do that. So we have 58 plus X equals 52 plus 2x. Again, what we're doing right now for the last 30 seconds has nothing to do with word problems, right? We are now in step three where we dive in and just do the math. So what's the next step in this equation? Separation, right? The double arrow thing like I showed you on the last problem. Now's the time when it's appropriate to say, hey, x. I'm going to go ahead and need you to go over there with your homie 2x. And since I'm at it, I would say politely, respectfully, uh, 52. I'm going to need you also to go over there with your homie so that I can get x's on one side and numbers on the other. So when I perform that math and I subtract the red x across to the 2x, how many x's will I have? Just an x. And when I take the 58, bless you, minus the 52, what do I get? And that's it. Like the problem's over at this point. I just need to write a sentence. But before we write our sentence, 
let's take a look. And this is another time where I think it's okay to get a little bit excited about the fact that this actually works. So Mark is currently 26, right? How old will Mark be in six years? 32. Dad is currently 58, right? That's, is that is that what it says? Yes, 58. How old will dad be in six years? Isn't that cool? If I go ahead in time six years, that's the magic point for Mark and his dad, where Mark can look at his dad and say, hey, dad, you're exactly twice as old as I am. It'll never happen before that year, and it'll never happen again after that year. Okay, yes. Wow. Um, should we calculate how long it's going to take until you're half their age? We can if you'd like. Let's do one more and then we'll do yours. If you want, that'd be fun. Yeah. And you can figure it out. It may not be a whole number, FYI. It might come out to a decimal. But I no, I don't think we, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Let's find out. Our last one. Well, last scripted one. And then Alana wants to calculate her. Uh, she wants to tell the future and figure out when she's going to be half as old as her parents. Again, you know it's one of these when right out of the gate, your teacher gives you what used to be the answer. So I'm telling you straight up, Reed is 48, Stella's 26. So we know the question isn't going to be anything about how old they are because, well, duh, we already know. Aren't these nice? They're short. Remember those first word problems that took like nine hours to copy down? These are nice. Um, what's my X going to be? Yeah. So this time X very specifically just refers not to an age, but a number of years. And notice the wording on this one. Um, what do these three underlined words indicate to you? Those four words, I apologize. Like I said, I can't count. We're going in the past. Subtraction, you bet. So basically what we're trying to say here is we want Rita to be three times as old as Stella. Uh, but we have to go in the past to make that happen. Like this, if we keep going into the future, I don't know if this will make sense to you. But if I go in the future, Rita never has a shot of being three times as old as Stella. Because for every time Stella adds one year, to, to keep pace, Rita would have to add three to stay triple her age and she's so with that ship has sailed so to go back in time now because stella's and rita's ages are too close and so we have to go backwards to find the magic year when rita was actually three times as old as Stella. so let's do it so we're going to write this out again in words whether you do this in words or not i leave it up to you but for the notes i probably would so what we want is to take the sentence of rita being three times as old as stella but we want to phrase it like this we want to say like Past Rita, we want to equal three times past Stella. I My teachers used to make me write, that's by the way, that's called verbal modeling. It used to be a big thing in algebra, and I remember not liking it very much when I was your age. Uh, so I try not to do it much. But I think sometimes it's good. It helps to kind of see the situation and say, what am I modeling this after? So in this case, I want to stay clear that I'm talking about the past. So here we go. <clears throat> How old was Rita in the past? <laughs> How old was Rita X years ago? She was 48 minus X. Again, I, at this point, I don't know what X is. I'm trying to figure out how far back would I have to go to figure out that year, that magic year, when Rita could look at Stella and say, I'm three times your age. Right? Now, I'm going to put equals, and then I'm going to copy down the three. And then in the parentheses, how old was Stella in the past? Minus X. We're just building these equations today off of future expressions and past expressions. Step two is over. 
Again, not a system, just a single equation. So let's solve. Uh, right side is where the math is, right? So we're going to leave the 48 minus x, uh, and then we're going to have, what's 3 times 26? It sure is. So what I have to do now is, again, math. Like, Ben, if you leave my class May 27th or whatever our last day is, and you don't know how to solve an equation like this, I say this. I have completely failed you. Like, this is priority numero uno when you head over across the hall to Mr. Manlove's classes. Can they solve it? I mean, there's, like I've said before, there's a hundred things I want you to be able to do. But this is number one. Kind of solve every equation anyone ever gives me. Yeah. So this time, rather than move the single X over, I'm going to go big brain mode and say, I'd rather actually take the minus 3X and add it across to that one so that I get my X to be positive. Left and right means nothing to me with equations. I don't care. You shouldn't either. And then the 48 says, well, if the X's are coming over and having their party over here, I guess I better bounce and head over there, right? So when I add my 3X, how many X's will I have now on the left? No, because I've only got minus one. So I have two. Because if I have if I have a minus one and I add three, negative one plus three is two. And if I take away the yellow 48, what's 78 minus 48? 30. Yeah, 30. And if I divide both sides by two, what is X? So, and I apologize. I don't think I wrote the answer. I need to go back. I, I'm sorry. I didn't do step four on the last problem, did I? And you guys didn't call me on it, but that was my bet. So I'll do it this time and then we'll go back and fix that. I got to geeking out and I forgot. So um, let's check it. Let's see if it's legit. How old is Rita right now? How old w was she 15 years ago? Cool. Okay. How old is Stella right now? How old was she 15 years ago? Ah, look at that. 11, 15 years ago, she was exactly triple. Yeah, that's pretty dope. So to answer the question using a sentence this time, uh, we would say uh, 15 years ago, comma, Make your English teachers proud. 15 years ago, was Rita was three times as old as Stella. Would you guys feel ripped off if I don't add step four to the last problem? Could you guys add that, you think? You already did because I'm such a slacker. Thank you. you. You used thrice. I love that word. So you said 15 years ago, Rita was thrice as old. I love that word. Uh, great. Good on you. So let's do, uh, let's make one up real quick and let's do uh, uh, Alana's because she wanted to. Alana, how old are you right now? So Alana currently is 17. And I think we're going to have a little issue here, but let's find out. So Alana is currently 17, and let's just go with parents. We we'll just go with dad. Is that okay? So Alana's dad is currently 50. So we're going to say let x equal the number of years. So what Alana is trying to figure out is how many years from now is – Um, it can't have passed yet because she's not half his age yet. So once she gets to half his age, then you'd have to go backwards to find it. But since it hasn't happened yet, and again, the reason is because every time Alana adds one, hers is really being kind of powered up times two because we're trying to double her age. So because she's so low below, then it's still yet to come. We just don't know when. So how old is Alana's future dad? 50 plus x and we want that to equal twice future alana like you guys could do this on your own and yours might be similar to this but your parents might be a little younger they might not i don't know um so we're going to put equals two times and how old is future alana and if we solve this very simple algebraic equation, Alana will now know how many years it's going to take before she can look at mom and dad and say, hey, 
you're twice as old as me. So fun, huh? Uh, so let's do this. So we have 50 plus X equals 34 plus 2X. And again, the math I think by now is pretty simple. I'm going to move the 1X over to the right to make a single X because I subtracted. I'm going to subtract the, thir the 34 and get. So let's take us. Let's take this for a spin. Uh, so Alana on her 33rd birthday is going to be able to look at her parents and say, hey, I'm half as old as you. So let's add 16. So Alana is currently 17. How old will she be in 16 years? Well, 33. Alana's dad is currently 50. How old will Alana's dad be in 16 years? And guess what? So there it is. When you are 33, at some point, your dad will be 66, and you guys can go out and get a cheeseburger and celebrate the, the, the ages. Oh, what's that? Really? Nice. Um, I'm going to hand out the next assignment to you just to get it off my desk. Uh, I'm not really going to expect you to make much progress on it because the clock is telling me that we've only got three minutes, and I would understand if you don't want to. Listen, don't hang on. Please. Hey, please don't lose them. Getting tired of handing out extras, okay? So I'm going to give it to you. You can put your name on it. Slide it nicely into your folder so it doesn't get all wrinkled. And then we'll work on it tomorrow during class. Unless you want to work on it tonight because that's how you roll. You do you. Thank you.